first question is from Michael Gee. Can going to failure be beneficial every once in a while? If so, how often? So personal story. So when I was a kid and I started working out, um, I followed the the routines, the bodybuilding routines of the bodybuilders of the 90s and of the, the kind of routines that Arnold Schwarzenegger used to write about. And of course, he was one of the most well-known bodybuilders who competed in the 70s. And so my routines were high volume, lots of sets, 15 sets per body part. And I did that for a while, but right around the age of about 15 and a half, maybe 16, my body plateaued uh, really, really hard. Um, then I found a book. Um, it was actually advertised in one of the bodybuilding magazines I was reading, and it was called Heavy Duty, and it had a picture of Mike Menser on it. Now, Mike Menser... Duty. <laughs> thanks, Justin. I was yeah. waiting for you to say that. Yes. <laughs> Can't <laughs> help it, dude. Can't you 12? It. I know, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, Mike Menser it was this really impressive-looking bodybuilder from the 70s and 80s. Super, super smart dude. So he's a really, really smart guy. And in the book, he talks about uh, training to failure. He said that you know there's a there's a, a signal, there's a kind of like a trip wire that you hit when you work out that sends the muscle building process in motion. He thought it was intensity that did that, so he said we'll just go to failure so that we know we hit that that signal. And, but to to offset the intensity, he only had people doing one set per body part once a week, super low volume. Literally, it was like. One exercise for chest, one for shoulder, one for back, and so on. And I didn't do that again till the following week. Well, believe it or not, I got great response. Now, it lasted about a couple months, and then I plateaued super hard again. Um, but I did learn that, you know, that there is some value to manipulating some of these factors. But failure for most people is just too much. It's just too much intensity. Because um, then later on, uh, what I learned was not trained to failure more often I just got more consistent results always. And for my clients, I almost never train them to failure. And, so. it, and, it, and it doesn't impede the following workout. No. That, right. that, that's the thing that I think where I really started to connect it is you get so sore, and I'm sure everyone's been in this position where you've trained so so hard. And let's say I, I had plans that I was training Monday, Wednesday, Friday this week, and let's say I'm running a full body routine and I just crush squats on Monday and then Wednesday rolls around and I'm still, I'm limping in because the second day after a, mm -hmm. a too hard of a workout is when it's worse anyways. Yeah. So here I am, I'm supposed to be lifting again on squats and my legs, I can barely walk. I, I don't care what you say, like that's going to hinder that workout. You're not going to be as strong if you're still recovering from how much damage you did on Monday. And so when I backed off of that and I wasn't doing as much damage, it allowed me to not only be more frequent about it, but then also to push myself at a more even consistent right. rate versus this these high peaks and, and lows, right? So I peak real hard with a hard ass intense, and then I have to go super light the next time because I'm so sore. Yeah, and intensity is, is much, it's easier to overdo intensity than almost anything else. It's true. I could literally take a deconditioned person off the street, bring him into our studio, and I could have them do leg exercises every single day so long as the intensity is appropriate, they can do that. I could take someone off the streets that decondition, take them through one set of squats to failure and, and crush them and destroy them, completely destroy them. So for most people, most of you listening right now, stop your sets about two reps short of failure. If you're advanced, going to failure is a tool that you can utilize, but I would even suggest you use that uh, infrequently.